by the way, I made a video about motivation a while back, like five years ago. Yeah, five years ago now. It's on my channel. I don't recommend you, you look at it, but it's pretty, it's not good. <laughs> Anyways. Hello, my name is Aveda and I did yoga for 40 days. because if you don't know I am a online fitness coach I coach monthly fit camps every month online um, and there's more details about that as well in my social media as well as in my YouTube bio if you want to find out more information okay so right off the bat I'll jump into why I did 40 days of yoga I am a person that needs to have plan and a goal in order to stay motivated and I don't think that that's uncommon I think that that's something that most people need in order to be motivated to work towards an end goal an end result I've had clients ask me many times what is the secret to staying motivated to work out and I don't think there's a single secret but what I do think is that there's lots of little things you can do for yourself to help you stay on track and help you stick to what it is you want to do. Like I said before, I'm somebody who needs to have a goal to, that I'm working towards all of the time. So if you scroll back to any of my older videos, you'll see that I've been in a bodybuilding competition, I played roller derby, blah, blah, blah. I think, I feel like I talk about it a lot, but I hop around from different sports and different interests and different challenges and different competitions because that's what keeps me motivated to be active and to be healthy and to be fit and to exercise and all that good stuff. So most recently I signed up to do a 40 day challenge for yoga. I'm also currently right now in the process of getting my yoga teacher certification and I'm almost there. I got about a month left to go. And throughout that process, this challenge came up and I needed to integrate more yoga practice into my life. I was not doing a good job of practicing on a regular basis. And so I felt like doing a challenge would be what would help me stay motivated and give me some guidance and a bit of a, a plan on how to accomplish this goal. So I did a challenge called 40 days to personal revolution it is by someone named baron baptiste that came up with the methodology behind baptiste power yoga and basically he put together a challenge that anybody could sign up for any level and it's up to you the onus is put back on you to practice every day but there are workshops there's a there's a plan that you're given there's homework assignments there's things like that to help you stay on track for me, having that kind of framework built around a goal works for me. I need to have structure in order to be successful. Even when I was doing something like CrossFit, again, I was going into the gym and someone else would come up with a plan and I just went in and followed the plan and I just knew that if I went, I would stay on the plan. And also for me, often in the past, I would do things like buy gym memberships, pay for CrossFit memberships do things like that because I'm also driven by money in terms of if I spend my money, I do not want to waste my money. So same thing with a yoga membership, anything like that. I know personally, if I spend the money on that, I'm going to go and, and utilize it because I don't like to waste money. If you're someone who can just buy a gym membership 
or pay for a class and then skip it and not feel any remorse about it, then that's not the tactic that's gonna work for you. So don't do that because you don't wanna waste your money either. So for me, the yoga challenge included meditation every day, journaling every day, and yoga every day. I will tell you this, when I started the challenge, I didn't have any weight loss goals. I didn't have any flexibility goals. There wasn't any kind of transformation that I was hoping to happen physically. It was just more so that I wanted to create a habit that I could continue to keep after the challenge was over. So my goal was to create something that was sustainable and realistic for me. So these are the things I want to share with you in regards to feeling motivated and being successful in reaching a goal that you have when it comes to working out or nutrition or something like that. First thing is you need a plan. Whether you create that plan yourself or you buy someone else's plan online or you you join a gym and follow the workout plan by a personal trainer there or you just download something off the internet for free having a structured plan is going to give you a path it's just like having a map if you just go out into the world and you have no idea which direction you're going or where your destination is then you're not going to get very far but if you know what the final destination is and you map out how to get there that's going to be really realistic for you you'll find that destination. You know what I'm saying? Step one, figure out a plan. Find a way to have a plan. Source out a plan. Decide, a, decide on a plan. Step two is we wanna create a short-term goal and a long-term goal in regards to that plan. Short-term goals and long-term goals are like like little cookie crumbs or bread crumbs on the pathway to your goal. They're gonna they're gonna help you stay motivated because you're gonna achieve little little goals along the way. And then you also can see the big picture of what that end goal is and why you're putting in this work and effort now. So short-term goals for the most part are goals within the first six months, maybe even shorter. Maybe if your plan is only a month long, then your short-term goal maybe will be a weekly goal or a halfway mark goal. So if you're new to working out, a good short-term goal is just to twice a week or three times a week do some sort of activity or workout if you aren't doing anything at all. So the best way is to start with just baby steps one or two times a week. And also it's so, so important and I cannot stress this enough when it comes to staying motivated is that you are successful. So what I mean by that is if you start out a plan and you say you want to work out five days a week and that's something you've never done before and by week one or week two you already are haven't been successful because stuff has happened you haven't been able to fit it in you're just gonna like beat yourself up about it and most likely give up on your goal but if you start out only doing something maybe once or twice a week that's so much more realistic and attainable and so when you accomplish that and you can check it off at the end of the week that you did those two days which whatever they were that feels good and that's going to be what keeps you motivated and keeps you going because little accomplishments those little breadcrumbs are what's going to keep fueling you towards your goal another part of setting yourself up for success is to know who you are and to be brutally honest about it and what I mean by this is if you're someone who's not a morning person um, don't try and set up a plan where you're gonna work out all of a sudden in the morning before you go to work if you've never done that before you don't enjoy it and it's not something that you want to do you're probably not gonna do it my in my mind before I did the 40 day challenge for this yoga challenge was like the most perfect thing is if I woke up early walked the dog came home, practiced yoga, and then I started my work day and had everything done before I even started work. Have I ever done that in my life? No. Do I ever wanna get up a minute before I have to? No, so I definitely didn't ever do that. But what I did realize is that my sweet spot for when I feel the most excited and energized about working out or doing something active is on my lunch break. Those are the times when I, like, I just wanna get out of my chair and I wanna do something. So if you're a morning person, that's amazing i'm jealous and you can put your plan in the morning <laughs> and if you're not a morning person don't do that so i do my stuff on my lunch break and 
I know myself. I know if I don't get it done on my lunch break, I'm probably not going to do it. So I just really have to be disciplined in doing it on my lunch break. So that's where there's a difference between motivation and discipline. You're not always going to have both. And sometimes you just, it's just going to be discipline. So it's just the commitment and you just have to drag your butt and do it because you're committed to a goal. You have, you're, you're, you're being disciplined about it. There's many times I really didn't want to do the yoga, especially on weekends. It's generally, I don't work out on weekends ever. I always take those as rest days. So I definitely had to drag my mat out, but I also would be kind to myself. I don't know why we've been taught, or at least I have this long standing relationship with goals and working out and, and routines and exercise and stuff that it was like a form of punishment and if i was miserable that meant i was working hard and that was good but that's not how i go about things anymore so if i'm not feeling like it i don't really want to do it what i will do is still pull out my yoga mat put on my workout clothes and commit to doing five to ten minutes and if after that i do not want to do it anymore i won't but i do know from experience that if i start doing something for five or 10 minutes, I generally will keep going for at least 20 minutes. I definitely don't support the idea that whatever plan you're creating, whatever you're trying to be motivated for, you should be miserable doing it because we only live one life. We don't, we don't I don't get back the, the, the last five minutes that I was sitting here talking and it just goes by. It just The clock keeps ticking and life is happening right now. So you should try my suggestion at least is to try and enjoy as much of your life as you can this includes working out i know i personally have days where i cannot wait to work out because it feels so good and i need it for various reasons and there's days where i don't really want to but i do know that it's good for me to do it mentally physically emotionally for my relationships etc so choose something that you're gonna for the most part enjoy most of the time doing if you hate running if you hate going to the gym if you hate yoga don't do those things don't do them because you think that they're good for you and blah 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 because why are we punishing ourselves don't do that pick something fun skateboarding jumping on trampolines yard work and some people like gardening and yard work and it's not really for me bike riding <laughs> swimming, horseback riding, I don't know, whatever it is, there's so many different ways to move your body that don't just do something because you think that's what you should do and you, you don't like it. And all of these tips are basically just, we keep circling back to things that are sustainable and realistic for you in your life. Keeping things sustainable and realistic is what's gonna keep it going long-term. It's gonna build healthy habits and you're gonna have positive relationships with working out and fitness. And that's gonna keep you in the long-term motivated to keep doing it and integrating it into your life. If it's miserable and punishment, no wonder you don't wanna do it. And no wonder it's not gonna be something that you can commit to and wanna like look forward to doing. You know what I'm saying? Another tip that I will share is just that when you're starting your plan or your program or you know this transition into being more active or trying a new activity is to let your friends and family know and it's not in the way of like telling friends and family so they'll they'll hold your feet to the fire and keep you accountable and all that sort of thing no what i mean more is that if you know you have to work out for example, I'll give you a specific example. So I need to work out before Jeremy gets home from work. I work out at home, but when he gets home, I will not work out. I just don't like it. Our place is not very big. I do not like working out in front of someone. And even though he does offer to go into like the bedroom or another room, then I feel bad and I don't want to be in the way. I just know the way that I am, that it's like, if I don't do it before he comes home, I'm probably just going to find an excuse when he gets home not to do it. So. I've let him know that I need to work out before you get home. Can you please let me know if you're going to be home early or anything like that so that I can make sure I get it done before you get home. That's what I mean by letting friends and family, roommates, whomever know, just to help you make your plan more sustainable. So if you are 
needing to maybe skip out on a social engagement or you know you have to change plans around so that you can kind of stick to your plan at least at the very beginning it's really important to be able to get the foundation of your routine or your habit like the 40 days of yoga did for me what it really does is that if you can commit to a month of just really sticking to something and really being disciplined about it you can start kind of being a little more flexible down the road but also just letting people know this is a part of your life that's important to you and it's a priority you are important being self first is not being selfish it is so important to carve away part of your day at least a few times a week that is just for you that you're doing something for yourself and especially related to physical activity moving your body it is so important and you are worth it okay and this last piece I'm just gonna touch on is a little bit about diet and nutrition and staying motivated in terms of a diet I will say this about any diet that you attempt to do whether it's keto um, Atkins diet which is like from the 90s like a low cholesterol diet anti-inflammatory diet any diet where you're eating a specific food group or not eating a specific food group it's always going to result in some sort of weight loss generally at the beginning because you're hyper focused on what you're eating and you're generally for the most part probably making healthier choices than you normally would but I will also say that most of those diets are not sustainable long term a lot sometimes they do Sometimes they work for people, but a lot of times they don't and you can get that yo-yo situation going where it's like you get on a plan and then you fall off a plan and you start a new plan and you fall off a plan and then you got like intermittent fasting and like all these kind of disordered ways of eating and at the end of the day, what I would recommend is just learning more about nutrition, learning the value of the different kind of food groups and how, what they do for your body on a real actual biological level and allow yourself to have the things that you enjoy but just in all in moderation and if you're someone who cannot do moderation it's like at the beginning especially trust me I understand there's certain foods that I don't like to buy and have in the house because I will just eat like that whole box of cereal or we will go through that whole tub of ice cream so I do have to be aware of my weaknesses when it comes to certain treats and foods and things like that but I definitely don't ever restrict any of those things because in my opinion the more that you do things like that the more you're going to just think about them want them and then maybe actually binge and like and feel defeated afterwards and then maybe feel like you're gonna give up on your healthy eating and whatever but instead if you focus just on integrating exercise into your life on a weekly basis like every other day or three days a week two days a week however it's going to work for you at the beginning just focus on moving your body finding activities that you enjoy you will find that there will be transformations happening all throughout your body whether it's your mental emotional physical being all transforming at the same time i believe that if you are making healthy choices for yourself you'll want to continue that in all areas of your life. Suddenly you're, you know, suddenly you're putting up boundaries with your ex and you're being honest with your mother and you're <laughs> being more agreeable and a better listener and things like that. Like who knows what's gonna happen if you just slowly focus on one thing at a time. So in closing, I would like to also add that meditation and journaling really do kind of like really round out you know this this plan that you may have I did do a video not too long ago about meditation and how it's helped me especially with my anxiety which trickles down into all kinds of stuff including my diet and my exercise routine so I do recommend maybe checking that out and see if it could help you as well and I'm going to do a video as well about journaling because it is so amazing it's done such great things for me and my anxiety and also just for like personal development and being able to be a lot more self-aware which also definitely impacts all those other areas of your life so I hope this video was helpful if it was you can give me a thumbs up if it wasn't thumbs down I guess that's fine um, also comment below any thoughts you might have about this I do like reading the comments and I like to respond to them as well and if you're not a subscriber, you can subscribe. That is completely up to you. You're a free person. You can do what you wish.
So thank you so much for tuning in today, and I'll see you guys in my next video.